We'll take your calls this hour as well. Dan, I got an email in from Emerson who wants some help. Uh, I live in San Diego. I always notice planes on sunny day sprain. It's bothered me for years. I know it's wrong. About two weeks ago, I look up and see a plane spraying across the skyline directly overhead. As the plane passes over me, I could see in its direct path ahead of the plane a dark line in the sky almost charting the plane's path. It looked like a dimensional hologram in the sky. It was just there for a few moments, then gone. It was eerie, but I just can't explain what it was. Any idea? Never heard of that one, Dane. It's a shadow, and people are confused at the distance that shadow can be cast. When the atmosphere is full of particulates, it creates uh, forms of shadowing and reflection that we would not normally see. It is absolutely a shadow we have yet to see any phenomenon that is not a shadow because again the refraction from the particulates creates some very anomalous scenarios and george if i if i may one one minute to just to lay a template here please no matter what people choose to believe or not in regard to the imploding biosphere because that will be self-explanatory very soon there'll be no way to hide it but Back to what's coming down to our air column. I just want to make this clear to your listeners. No matter what their beliefs on the state of the environment, the state of the climate, if we can't breathe without sucking in a lung full of toxic heavy metals, is that not our most immediate fight for life short of nuclear cataclysm? If I may, again, just a short a moment here to read a statement from internationally recognized and internationally award-winning neurologist Dr. Russell Blaylock. This is his words, not mine. My major concern is that there is evidence they are spraying millions of tons of nanosized aluminum compounds into the atmosphere. It has been demonstrated in the scientific and medical literature that nanosized particles are infinitely more reactive and induce intense inflammation in a number of tissues. Of special concern is the effect of these nanoparticulates on the brain and spinal cord. There's a growing list of neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's disease, and Lou Gehrig's disease, are strongly related to exposure to environmental aluminum. Almost done. I pray that the pilots who are spraying this dangerous substance fully understand that they are destroying the life and health of their families as well. This is also true of our political officials. Once the soil, plants, water, and water sources are heavily contaminated, there, there will be no way to reverse the damage that has been done. That's an excerpt from a full report from this internationally recognized physician that's posted at geojwatch.org. We have a fight for life on our hands right here, right now, with every breath we take. Are they doing things to the honeybees as well? Well, let's elaborate on that. Most of your listeners know the bees are dying, I would assume. We now have peer-reviewed study to back up what we have stated at geojwatch.org for about a decade. We knew that it was not just glyphosate killing the bees, not just the RF microwave transmissions killing the bees, but we knew it was heavy metals. We now have peer-reviewed study to prove that aluminum exposure is killing the bees. Your listeners can please look this up. Just search bees aluminum, and they will find peer-reviewed study that states on the study that the bees are dying of symptoms that resemble Alzheimer's and dementia, just like what I just read, from massive aluminum exposure. They're dying a thousand miles into the wilderness. This is not related to farms or industry. It can only be connected to climate engineering and the climate engineering fallout. All right, let's take calls for the rest of the hour. We go to Annie in Alabama to get things started. Annie, go ahead. Yes, what is the chance that Kilauea might put enough particulates into the air to cool the earth down this summer? And what is the downside of that for the whole world? I know there's a downside on Kilauea because, you know, you shouldn't build your house there knowing what's going to happen. It's just like a if I could elaborate a bit further on the cooling part. About 1975, there was some discussion of why the planet wasn't warming as fast, and some scientists were even wondering if there was an ice age coming. Do you remember right, that? Right, right. Some, okay. some still think there's a little ice age coming. Well, for those who state that, I would reply with this. We just passed, we just passed, April 2018 was the 400th consecutive month of above normal temperatures. So the notion that we're heading into an ice age is completely false. And the notion in 1975 that that was happening was also false. It was simply the result of 30 years of climate engineering, especially over the polar regions, that temporarily, like Mount Pinatubo, cooled the planet, but at horrific cost. And 
after 75, when those negative effects kicked in, the warming continued straight up until 1998, when it was the warmest year ever recorded, and climate engineering was really ramped up. And George, about 1998 is where they implemented the climate change term, as opposed to the global warming term, because they knew with the ramp up of the programs, they were going to increase the weather whiplash scenarios that we already talked about. So they needed a climate change term. Does that make sense? It sure does. So again, uh, hmm. although such an eruption may have a temporary effect against the backdrop of climate engineering, that effect would probably not be uh, of any magnitude. And, and at the rate the planet's imploding right now, we're going to have a lot of other immense challenges very, very soon. Just what we need. Yes. Jeff in Sacramento, California, first time caller for us. Hey, Jeff, go ahead. Hey, Mr. Winnington. Um, I have a couple questions. I live in Sacramento, California, and for the last two years, I came across your YouTube where your radio transmission made me aware of the situation. I work outside, so I see the spraying every day. I try to bring up the subjects to my friends, and they think I'm crazy. They say it's contrails, which, of course, I know the difference listening to your radio show and going to geoengineering.watch.org. My questions are, all these metal particulates now that they're constantly spraying us, especially here in Sacramento, can they also be used as more of a mischievous deed in the future? They're getting ready to launch this new 5G, which I've heard on the Alex Jones show, you know, it could be used, you know, it's really bad, the microwaves that they're going to be sending through this 5G. With all those metal particulates, could it be used against us? You know, could there be more that they're going to use as that as a conduct, conductivity you know, towards the human population. Maybe, I don't know, to control our mind, to do something like that. And then also, who's paying for all of this? This has got to be, is this taxpayer money? Well, it probably is. All these, yeah. yeah, all these pilots, not only across the United States, this is a worldwide, I've seen a YouTubes uh, all over in different places of spring, and I've done a couple of personal YouTubes myself. You know, and even in Sacramento, they've got new jets up there. They're different color spraying now. They're, it's amazing the X's, they place these markers everywhere. And if it changes, you know, a certain way, then they start doing the heavy spraying. And you got to work outside to see it and, or just look up. You know, everybody's in their cubicle in their offices, you know, and then they get out and they look at their phones. They're looking down. All you got to do is look up to see what's going on in our skies. And I, like I say, this is nonstop. All right, go ahead, Dan. If I get back into those questions first, at the beginning of this program, I did mention there are many agendas being carried out in our skies. It goes far beyond climate engineering or weather warfare. Next, in regard to your friends that don't want to believe you, might I suggest if you pass them on credible data with images that cannot be denied. We have NASA images that are shocking of square cloud formations, massive radio frequency transmission interference with cloud formations. If you pass them on a flyer, and you can download these flyers from geoengineeringwatch.org for free, print them locally if you wish, or order them from us at our approximate cost. We just want to get them in circulation. Pass on credible data, much, much more effective. In regard to what you correctly stated, Jeff, that are we becoming more electrically conductive because we're all absorbing these particles? Mm -hmm. The short answer is yes. Sure. Can radio frequency microwave transmissions have a greater effect then on our systems? Yes. You're exactly correct. Should we be worried? Absolutely. We should be extremely concerned. This is 5G is a frequency used for crowd control. Why would we think that this wouldn't be used on us given everything that we know already? We know, George, you know this in the Pentagon in 2012, or we know that U.S. agencies ordered 2.4 billion rounds of ammunition, hollow point ammunition. Who do we think that's for? Same with the 5G. Why would we think that at the point in time they can no longer control populations that are waking up to the severity of what's unfolding? Why wouldn't we think they would use these frequencies to help control those populations? Back to the money now. Your final question, Jeff. Great question. We now know... The Pentagon cannot account for about $21 trillion with a T. Do they need our tax money? No, not particularly, because they can print whatever they want so long as the dollar is the global reserve currency. That's why some of these other countries are being taken out also, because they want to trade oil and currency other than dollars. Complex scenario, but bottom line is, when the Pentagon, depending on the study, the Pentagon can't account for between 21 and $30 trillion. That's enough to pay for a lot of geoengineering. 
Text and tweets. What do you have, Tom, for us back there? Yeah, this one's from Katrina in New Orleans. Can you please have Dane talk about our drinking water and what sources? Drinking water. On the water scenario, we know surface waters are being contaminated. We have the lab test to prove it. I was personally invited to a closed-door meeting for Northern California Environmental Waste uh, for Shasta County has shown the test from the Sacramento River, the drinking water for California, with massive spikes of aluminum that they could not account for. Now, we're compiling legal data. That's as far as I can go with that because we may file our lawsuit right here in Northern California. In regard to groundwaters, some groundwater sources can still be relatively pure. It depends on the strata that groundwater exists in. Aluminum is highly conductive, tends to bond to other elements. It does not exist, for your listeners so they know this, aluminum does not exist in the environment in free form naturally, period. Bonded to other elements. For those who claim it's a common element, we would expect to see it, no, not in free form. Can't be there unless it's been mined and refined and sprayed. Is it a concern that it's in our water? Absolutely. The state of California stopped testing for aluminum in drinking water in 2002. Why? They knew why. One would think. Next up, let's go to Bruce in Woodland Hills, California. Bruce, thanks for calling. Go ahead. Thanks, George, for taking my call today, and I cannot thank you enough for all you've done, all your efforts that have exposed these horrific crimes to the world. Thank you, Bruce. Uh, I've been studying this now for over four and a half years on a daily basis. I've educated myself thoroughly, and I've educated many other people. What I want to state is, is what we must do. We cannot go to any politicians, senates, governors, to do this because they're not going to do anything. What has to be done is every single human being that has a voice needs to educate themselves thoroughly and don't get caught up in the disinformation troll sites. Educate yourself, connect the dots, and educate as many people as you could because the biggest threat that faces the people that are in control, the power structure that is carrying out these crimes, the biggest threat they have is mass awakening and mass awareness and mass voice. And that's why they're making every effort they could to keep us dumb and divided. And if you look at the news, it's very obvious what they're trying to do. And that's what we must do. Bruce, I don't think I, I could answer that in any finer form than you just did. That is an extremely important question. It is the bottom line. You're completely correct. The entire system is bought, sold, and paid for. And the only way we are going to have any chance of exposing and stopping climate engineering is exactly what you stated, to reach a critical mass of awareness. That effort will take all of us. You are completely correct to share credible data from a credible source. Again, that's what we try to be at geoengineeringwatch.org. We are non-political. Everything we post, we can back up. We supply materials that people need to pass on to help wake up others. If we reach a critical mass of awareness, and our military brothers and sisters, and George, we know, correct, we know there's many good military men and women in the service, correct? We know that. Of so, course. But we must wake them up to what they're being used for. They must stop being blind order followers. That's not patriotic. And they are killing their own, as Dr. Russell Blaylock just stated on the record. If we can reach a critical mass of awareness, we have a chance of stopping these programs from the inside out by awakening those who are responsible for carrying those programs out and hopefully creating mass mutiny in their ranks. Dane, as you look at everything you've looked at and studied in terms of this, what would you do to, to fight back? Would you simply go all solar at home? What, what would you do? We must all engage in exactly what Bruce just described. Because being off the grid, being a prepper, if you will, for those who are doing that, thinking they're going to ride this out, not going to happen. Let me put this into mathematical context. We are on path for what's scientifically termed Venus syndrome, and that's not a metaphoric term. It's literal. If we remain on this course and the energy balance of the planet is completely blown apart into a runaway climate collapse, which I would argue we are already in, if we can stop the damage, perhaps we have some chance of salvaging something. But as far as those who think they're going to get out of the way and ride it out, not going to happen. The only chance we have is to do exactly what Bruce described, and I, I thank you, Bruce, for your, your call in and for outlining that so articulately. That's what we need to do. Make our voices heard while we can, sharing credible data from a credible source. Wake those around you. Ask them to do the same until people take to the streets with their pitchforks and torches. We must 
reach a critical mass of awareness, and we must do it soon. Let's go to John in Ohio now. Welcome to the program. Hi, John. Go ahead. Uh, yes, hello. Uh, I agree, but I think the main obstacle to that is the uh, uh, Pentagon, CIA-controlled media, and uh, all you have to do to prove that from a Senate and the Congressional Committee reports when they had a few honest uh, politicians back in the 70s is look up CIA Operation Mockingbird about... Uh, the massive infiltration of uh, the and control of the CIA over all of the media, uh, liberal and uh, fake liberal and uh, right wing whatever, uh, including NPR. If you just look up with two Ks, Kevin Close, director of NPR, was also director of uh, all CIA propaganda broadcasts. So that goes for all of the media, whether it's CNN or Fox, uh, are leading us into these wars. Uh, for the benefit of those uh, war profiteers that really run our country. And I, I, I've i noticed a, a site that I consider credible because they're talking about uh, the things you're talking about with weather warfare, globalresearch.ca, which is coming under attack now by uh, the, the State Department and Google and uh, Facebook. Uh, globalresearch.ca carries uh, credible people like uh, uh, Paul Craig Roberts, look him up with all three words, Paul Craig Roberts, who was a top official in the Reagan administration, has since re uh, renounced all of the uh, militarism and warmongering of that administration, has uh, been uh, writing powerful articles. People like uh, uh, Daniel Ellsberg of the Pentagon Papers mm -hmm. uh, has been uh, uh, banned uh, virtually in this country, along with Seymour Hersh, who exposed the Milai massacre. He can't get his stuff printed in this uh, uh, prostitute media in this country where he points out that uh, the United States, uh, 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 the, the State Department has actually sent sarin gas to the uh, terrorists that the United States is supporting in um, uh, uh, Syria to create a false flag uh, 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 frame-up of uh, the Assad government to justify exactly what happened, the bombing of, of Syria, until people realize that uh, uh, things like CIA uh, Operation Northwoods proves these elites don't uh, care about us. That uh, CIA Operation Mockingbird, uh, 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 rather Northwoods, uh, proves from Pentagon documents that the Pentagon planned to mass murder Americans and create terrorist bombings in the United States and with the help of the uh, media to frame up uh, Cuba for a full-scale invasion. You've done your homework, John. We're going to come back and wrap things up with final calls next on Coast.